Let's go back to the San Antonio card. One of the big fights on the card. Juan Adams going up against Greg Hardy. Greg Hardy is back, and he's kind enough to be joining us via the Magic of Skype. There he is. Greg, how are you? What's up, boss man? How you doing? I'm doing great, and sorry for keeping you waiting. It's uh, been a bit of a backlog today, so I appreciate your patience. And, and we have a, uh, a special guest with us as well. Who's this? This is uh, Mia Hope, future champ. All right. Would, do, that, hey, that is your dog. Would you really... Would you really try, like, would you be okay with her becoming a fighter? Is that something that you would want? Hey, man, that's why I do what I do, so she can do whatever she wants in the whole entire world, man. That is true. All right. I like it. Um, all right. Well, big fight for you. Uh, I, I would argue toughest test thus far in your career. Would you agree? Well, you know, it's a bigger opponent. UFC tested so far. I think it's a, I think it's a, a good test. I wouldn't say the toughest so far. Okay. Uh, he has, as I'm sure you've seen, he has taken a lot of shots at you. He's been talking about you since long before you were even in the UFC. Have you seen this stuff, and do you feel like he has crossed the line at any point? Has he made this too personal? Uh, you know, whatever he needs to do to sell a fight on his end, man, um, when, you when you're talking about peasants and children, you know, obviously I got some experience dealing with children. They, uh, they act out, they lash out so they can get what they want, man. And that's really the only way they know how to act. You know, they don't know how to act how, like professionals. They don't know how to act like uh, gentlemen, and they don't know how to act like world-class fighters. And uh, that's what I'm trying to keep my mind on. That's what I'm trying to keep uh, keep my keep my actions reflecting and uh, just to stay in that world. So I haven't seen or paid attention to a lot of anything he's saying, but not really worried about it though at all. So thus far in your MMA career, no one has really tried to poke you um like he has and i'm wondering like this week in san antonio you will probably be around him you'll have a face off and whatnot are you getting prepared so that you don't fight emotionally in there right that you just kind of go out and do whatever you have to do yeah you know um after the alan crowder fight man fighting emotionally is just out the window you know for <laughs> me this is, this is this is something that i'm developing I'm, I'm developing and uh kind of growing into man and i'm in a stage right now to where like i said i'm trying to be a professional fighter man like i was a professional football player and I'm trying to, I'm sort of like finding my niche and finding my area in, in this field, man. And I don't, I'm, there's just no room for childish antics and, and, you know, poking, as you say, in this fight. Uh, if you would have said something about, you know, my fight style, being able to beat me, this, that, and the other, that would have been worth addressing or something like that. But just uh, the little barbs just shows that he's a, like I said, he's a rookie, he's a child. That, that doesn't, that doesn't affect me, man. I'm a, I'm a superstar. I don't, I don't address things like that. So you last fought just a few months ago. They're keeping you active. Do you like this schedule? Do you like fighting every two, three months? She likes it. You like it? <laughs> Everybody here likes it, man. We're getting, we're getting paid. Uh, we're working hard. We're moving up, man. I'm doing what I'm enjoying, man. I'm getting the opportunity to compete, you know, and that's honestly what I really wanted to do from the beginning. Have my, oppor have my opportunity and my time to compete, get back into this field and just get in and work hard, man. And um, kind of like that. Kind of like the uh, NFL schedule, you know, it's week after week after week. So I'm used to just being in the grind all the time, working hard and uh, just proving myself. So this is kind of uh, this is kind of long line of exactly what I wanted, man. So it's not quite Dallas, but uh, it's it's pretty close. It's San Antonio. Getting to compete back in Texas, what does that mean for you? It's amazing, dude. They're the great state of Texas, man. The best state of, of all time, man. Um, they welcomed me in. They, they uh, gave me a home. I still live here down in Dallas, man. So I would just say it's it's a great opportunity. You know, I'm, I'm looking for a great turnout. I'm looking for um, a bunch of great fans to show up, and I'm looking forward to putting on a great show for the state. For the state, man, it's a uh, it's, it's it's looking good for me. What about what about the fact that you know this is training camp season, and you're seeing people get opportunities now, Greg, uh, in you know in the NFL and these other leagues. Are you starting to get that itch a little bit? Are you starting to wonder if the phone, like, do you, do you still care about that sort of thing? Do you want to get that call? Uh, you know what, man? Not really. It's, uh, here. It's, uh, it's a good season for me, man. I haven't, I haven't really been paying a whole, a whole lot of attention to the football scene. It's been coming and going for me. I've been in camp, honestly, for the last two years. You know, I've been above that dorm two months at a time, back to back to back to back to back. So it hasn't been a lot of time for me to just, you know, focus on football or watching TV or anything like that, man. It's just been all advancement, you know, working on my skills, developing, shutting the TV off, shutting the game off. And 
honestly, you know, trying to change the game, man, trying to show people something that they've never seen before. Have you officially closed the door on that, on that career, on that chapter in your life? Man, I'm honestly looking, looking, looking into retire, how to officially retire on that side. Uh, I've always wanted and always said that if I had opportunity to go back and get that yellow jacket, man, that's just something, that's a goal that I have for myself. But the way things have been going in this field, man, the way uh, things are looking for on the boxing side, the way everything is just coming together, it's over for me, man, on that side. You know, um, it would be, I feel like it would be disrespectful at this point after getting such a warm welcome, well, as warm as it can get and um, such a, a great welcome into the uh, fight, fight, fight world, man. I feel like it would just be disrespectful to, to go back and even teeter tie. I'm fully committed, three years in the making, above American top team. Dan Lambert's giving me the opportunity and it's all eyes on, on the belt, man. Are you are you at peace with that? Are you okay with that? Never playing again? Oh yeah, you know, I, man. Listen, when it comes down to it, if you check out my fans, you check out the film. Man, I was one of the most entertaining people on that field when I was on it, and they loved me. I loved them back. We had a great relationship. Spent hours and hours and hours signing autographs for these people, man. And it was like I said, it was just a, it was a give and a take, man. And it was beautiful for me. Uh, you know, the stories are gonna tell you something different, but. Like I said, ask the real fans, ask people who were there. It was, it was a beautiful thing, man. We created a way of life. We changed the culture in some places, and it goes down in history. But now it's, uh, it's time to move on to a new chapter, you know? I'm completely at peace. So you just mentioned boxing. What's going on there? You know what, man? I'm looking into it, uh, doing some work in there. Got some of the greatest coaches in the world, at American top team, and just getting an opportunity to move back and forth through the different arts. I found I found a I found a nice spot in boxing, you know, and I found a starting to develop a love for it, a like for it, and a, a yearning to actually get in there and try it out, you know. I think with the blessing of the big man upstairs, uh, that it's something that I would love to look into, man, and start start fighting pretty soon just to wet my feet, man. I think I could be one of the, if not the greatest, uh, fight sports heavyweight of all time, you know. Not even just MMA, just the greatest combat sports heavyweight. And, and just to be I'm clear, versatile, you know? and just to be clear, the big man upstairs is that God or is that Dana White getting his blessing? It's Dana White. Oh, okay, <laughs> I wasn't sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right, have you have you talked to him about this? Like, would he give you this opportunity? You know, it's uh right now. I'm focused on this fight. You know, I'm still under contract, and um, they're doing a lot in, in the boxing world right now. They're making some moves, so I'm just you know I'm waiting patiently. Uh, we've talked about it in the past. We got a great relationship, man, and he's been a, he's been a great guy. So I have nothing but respect for him. So I'm gonna make my moves according to what you know he allows me to do, and I'm gonna take my time and be patient in that, and just finish out, devote, like I said, devote my time to this, the rest of this, uh, the rest of this contract, the rest of these fights, and give the fans for one all their money that they pay for and more, and um, dominating the performances, man. Because you know, even if I do do the boxing, I'm not leaving MMA, man. Like I said, it's it's about combat sport. If I can go into kickboxing and everything else and figure that out, I will. You know, I'm here to stay. I'm a problem, man. You've seen it before in football. There's, there's no getting rid of me. I'm the hardest working man here, and it's not going to stop. So you're going into this fight with an official UFC win under your belt. The last fight in, in April, you were going in, you know, with that controversial DQ and all that stuff. Do you feel different? Do you feel a little more confident? You got the win out of the way. You got the, the W out of the way. Are, is the mindset a little bit different going into this one as opposed to the one back in April? Man, I've just I've had so much experience in, in just competition that it's not a it's not a day to day thing. It's not a game to game thing for me. It's honestly a belief and respect in, in in my ability and in my coaches, you know. And I have a high respect for my coaches these days, man. Just from the work they put in and the time they give me, and I, I have a high belief or a very 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 strong belief in my um, ability these days. Um, I've been working hard. I put in all the work, and like they say, man, it's all gonna show. And it has been showing. It's just it's, it's it's basically time to show that it's not a fluke again, you know, and it's my time to step up. And that's all I've really been concerned about and thinking about. So it's never really crossed my mind, you know, those last couple of fights, the DQs or any of that, man. Wins and losses, you know, part of being Boston is my man Meek say. I understand you were in Las Vegas at the PI. Was that your first time there? And how long were you there for? It was my first time there as an official UFC fighter. Uh -huh. So, um, that was that was kind of cool. I got to work in uh, work in the facility and get some rounds and get some rounds in the ring. Just move around the facility and, and kind of enjoy it as a fighter this time. You know, it was amazing for me, man. It's it's a blessing to just be back in that world to where you know it's, it's a place devoted for an athlete to hone his skills. It's, it's a beautiful thing, and 
I think I was there for three. I was there for three days. You know, I took some time to uh, hone in my boxing skills at Mayweather Gym, and then I went there for the last two days at the PI and just kind of toned it up with my coach Dean Thomas and just kind of making sure everything's just well rounded and keeping everything toned. Did you see Floyd when you were at his gym? I did not see Floyd. Floyd was the only one I didn't see. I saw the other Mayweathers and a whole bunch of champions, and I got to kind of just be in the way of life with fighting and see how champions conduct themselves. And that's been, that's been a big thing for me, man, just surrounding myself with champions, surrounding myself with uh, great fighters and people just to understand and take in how this game works, you know, because at the end of the day, man, as much as I say I'm about to, I want to be the greatest and I am the greatest, uh, I'm still a rookie, you know, and there's a level of humility that I got to approach this game with. And I think that comes with being around champions and being around great people, so. I think I saw a photo with you and Floyd Sr., right? Did you did you work with him a little bit? Yeah. What was that like? Uh, I w- I work with Jeff Mayweather um, okay. on my boxing. We got to hang out with Floyd and, and, and talk to him a little bit and, and watch him work and stuff like that. He had some, he had a, had a bunch of guys in the work. I mean, it's a packed gym. The boys are out there working hard. So, kind of get in where I fit in. And so, now that we're a few fights into the run, and, and of course, like the debut got all kinds of buzz, and, and now here you're just like another guy on the roster. Um, do you feel like you've been accepted by the UFC fans? Do you feel like you've been accepted by the MMA community? It, it doesn't you know, you fighting doesn't garner the same kind of uh, talk that the debut did back in January, and that's probably a good thing for you and the team. Do you feel like you've been, you know, you've been welcomed to the sport and there's no issues anymore? Do you welcome me, my man? Hey, man, I'm all good. I'm all, <laughs> I'm all good. Listen, I will re- reiterate. I, need, I was just talking about the placement on that card. I've never had a problem with you doing MMA or uh, following your dreams. I, I, I've never said anything about any of that. I just had an issue with the placement on the card with Rachel. We don't have to bring up all that all over again. I'm just talking, <laughs> well, unless you want to. Well, that's all I need, man. That's oh, just me? Need, you know, you only need me? Like, no, well, no, good people like you, man. Oh, thank you. As long as the good people, are, as long as the good people of the sport uh, welcome me in and understand that I'm here to work, and that I have earned it and that I will continue to earn it, man. That's all I need. There's always going to be naysayers, man. But, you know, as it dies down, I'm starting to get the respect as a fighter that I feel like I wanted, you know. And uh, that's like that, that. That's what means the most to me, man. I wasn't I didn't come into this sport to uh, make people fall back in love with me and change their minds and this, that and the other. I came here to prove a point. I came here to work. I came here to be the, the champ. I came here to be the best man. And the more that I uh, persuade and the more that I get people on my side, to believe that and show them the truth and show them the proof in that pudding, the better I'll feel, man. So I'm, I'm feeling pretty good right now, man. I think it's going to be a whole lot of cheers after I knock this guy out. Okay. Have you, and, and just last thing, like have when's the last time you felt this way about an opponent because, because he's talked about your past and because he's made this personal, did you feel some kind of oh. different way about this guy? Don't ever get it twisted, buddy. We feel this way about every opponent. Okay. I, and think about this, man. Anybody DQ or not, the step in that ring has gotten knocked out, man. It's just my way of life. It's my style. We're going to put them asleep one way or the other. And if we don't, I'm going back to the drawing board because something went wrong. I have no malice in my heart for anybody, man. You know, in my, um, in my journey to become a better person and a better fighter, man, I'm trying to put a lot of that just... Uh, hate in my heart away, man. I put a lot of the feelings and emotions away and, you know, change my perspective on things and that new perspective, man. Like, I just don't have a lot of hate for people, you know. Um, I do have a love for uh, disconnecting people from their consciousness, and that's what's going to happen to anybody that's up to the ring with you, man, whether it's the champ currently or whether it's a man with one or two fights or somebody that's talking trash or somebody that's saying nothing. You know? Everybody's on the hit list. You signed that contract, you approved it. So take your punishment. I wish you the best, Greg. Looking forward to it on Saturday on ESPN+. Plus. Big fight. Greg Hardy, Juan Adams. Big test for Greg Hardy. Big test for Juan Adams as well. Thank you very much for doing this. Good luck to you. Man, thank you for having me, brother. It was a pleasure. Hello, everyone. It's Ariel Hawani. I just came here to thank you for watching our ESPN YouTube channel. It's the best. You know what else is the best? The ESPN app. You can get highlights, analysis, all that stuff and more. And if you want premium content and live streaming sports, there's only one place for all of that. It's ESPN+. Plus. 